إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه وعلى موضع له أما بعد Dear respected brothers and sisters after praising Almighty Allah and sending salutations and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam following the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is my advice to all of you including myself to have the taqwa of Almighty Allah have the consciousness of Allah in our day-to-day -day life. Dear brothers and sisters, among the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the human being, one of them is this modern in inventions and technology. <coughs> and if we try to count the ni'mah of Allah, we won't be able to count. <coughs> and also, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ that Allah made this clear for you. <coughs> he made this announcement. That if you be grateful to Allah for his bounties, for his ni'mah, he will increase in his bounties and favors upon you. And if you be ungrateful, then the punishment of Allah, wrath of Allah is very severe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Just imagine the previous people, <coughs> kings, or very rich people, like Parun, for example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him that his treasures, just the keys of the treasures were carried over many camels and they could not carry just the keys. But think about the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The card which we hold in our pocket, for some of the people that card might have more value in sight <coughs> than those keys that time they were holding. This is another name of Allah, how things become easy. Think about the people, the previously <coughs> very rich people, only in their very rich, very rich, very high class people, only in their hapa there was a hot water and people did not have the hot water. General people did not have the hot water. So people write that so and so he used to take <coughs> He used to go to Hammam, they call the Hammam, the hot water, the sauna. Every week or after every meeting or battle, so they write like this as a pride at that time. But imagine the favor of Allah upon you, just is opening the tap and you'll have the hot water. <coughs> and think about likewise so many things. So many things. People travel from one place to another place on the back of camels, going for Hajj and Umrah, meeting others, walking. <coughs> we know many stories of the Muhaddithin, they walk just to gain the knowledge from one place to another place, walking months and months and months just to gain one hadith of the Prophet. 
Imagine the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People in three, four days, they are going for Umrah and coming back. Less than 10 days, people are going for Hajj and coming back. And people used to just prepare to go to Hajj years and years. Ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them easy. And one of the special ni'mah is the cars. And our ability to drive. And this will be the topic of the khut to today's khutbah, inshallah. As a Muslim, our religion is a complete way of life. In every aspect of the life, we have teachings from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned how should be the Muslim's matter when he's walking, driving. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the slave of Allah, slave of Ar-Rahman, Ibadu Ar-Rahman, when they walk on earth, they walk without pride, with modesty, with humbleness, very gentle. This is the attribute given by Allah to those who believe in Allah, Ibadu Ar-Rahman. This is the way when they walk. And as a command, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to us, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Don't walk on earth, maraha, with full pride. Arrogance, don't walk, arrogant. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَقُورٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like every arrogant person. Allah does not like him. وَقْصِفْ فِي مَشِّيْ And the command came, walk moderately, gently, careful. And another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a similar command. He says, لَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Don't speak what you don't have the knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge, better for you to be quiet. Don't assume things and start talking about behalf of others or about others. لا تقفو ما ليس لك به علم. If you don't have the knowledge of Islam, don't talk it. Don't say I think. No, you think or you don't think. It doesn't matter. What Islam remains, it remains. Don't just give your own opinions if you don't have the knowledge. إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولا. Indeed, your hearing. Your sight, your heart, they all will be questioned on the Day of Judgment. They all will be examined on the Day of Judgment. And then Allah says, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Don't walk arrogantly on earth. Don't drive arrogantly on earth. إِنَّكَ لَن تَخْلِقَ الْأَرْضِ وَلَن تَبْلُغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولَا You are not going to slash the earth you are not going to ascend the earth neither you are going to reach the heights of the mountains <coughs> so don't walk arrogantly don't drive arrogantly <coughs> and this all things those who walk arrogantly those who drive arrogantly don't bother about others this is really dislike before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah hate these things. So as a Muslim, all the time humble, gentle. In his driving, in his walking. This is the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The narrators describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to ride his camel very fast. Very fast. But when there were people, when there were others surrounding the Prophet ﷺ, he was holding his own camel and pulling the neck of the camel very close so the camel doesn't go faster. And he was saying to the people, as Sakina, Sakina, oh people, humbly, humbly, gently, kindful, don't be rushed, don't hurt others. This is the 
teaching of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and look how Sahaba took that in their in their everyday life. How they took this responsibility. Some of the Sahaba used to walk as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam walked. They used to go very humbly, and the responsibility in the other way. As a hakim, as a ruler, look at Umar radiallahu ta'ala and he says, he says that, Wallahi law ta'atharat baghla fi al-Iraq, if a mule, a donkey fall in Iraq, because of the road was not made properly, he says that, lahasabani allahu anha, Allah would account me because I am the ruler. Why the road was not clear for him? But what does it show? It shows the responsibility. It shows the manners a Muslim should have his responsibility towards the others when he is driving, when he is riding. And look at the general teaching of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages all the time to be considerate about others. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam encouraged us to be rafiq, to be soft. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inna Allah rafiq yuhibbu rafiq fi al-amri kulli." Allah subhanahu wa taala is gentle and He loves gentleness in every matter of you, yours, every matter, all the matters. He loves this gentleness. And another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says. In Allah Rafiq and Yuhibbu Rifqa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gentle and kind and he loves the kindness. And then wa yu'ti ala rifqi ma la yu'ti ala al-unf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the kindness what he does not give to the harshness. So if you are harsh, if you are arrogant, you are not going to go anywhere. You have to be kind. And then in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says man u'tiya hadhahu min ar-rifq faqad u'tiya hadhahu min al-khayr whoever has given the kindness and the softness he has given a great portion of goodness <coughs> and wa man hurim hadhahu min ar-rifq faqad hurima hadhahu min al-khayr and if somebody does not have that kindness then he has been taken away the goodness from him. This is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about it. <coughs> and when it comes to the roads and the driving, as part of our faith, iman, we have to be really careful, and we have to be a beneficial citizens of the country. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. الإيمان بالعنوة ستون شعبة. إيمان has over sixty different parts, different aspects. أعلىها قول لا إله إلا الله. The highest of that one is saying لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. وأدناها and the least of it إماتة الأذى عن الطريق. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the least of it is removing the harmful substance from the street from the path. <coughs> One of the Sahabi, <coughs> he came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abu Zar radiyallahu taala, and he asked, "Oh Prophet of Allah, tell me some action. Show me some action. Teach me some action, which I'll do and I'll get benefit out of it." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he looked at him and he said. <coughs> أعزل الأذى عن طريق المسلمين. Remove the harmful objects from the path. This is the advice of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to Abu Dhar رضي الله تعالى. He said طريق المسلمين from the path of the believers, path of the Muslims. It does not mean that other paths you are not allowed to do it because it was Medina, majority of the Muslims. So that was a saying of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The hukum is for all the paths, for every street. And Sahaba did it. Sahaba did it. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا." Look at the prophethood of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. "لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا." I have seen a person. 
what he's doing yataqallabu fil janna fi shajaratin and he is in janna i have seen a person in janna and then what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said why he is in janna because of one branch of tree because one branch of tree so what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said قَطَعَهَا مِنْ زَهْرِ التَّرِيقِ كَأَنَّ تُؤْذِ النَّاسِ This person, one branch came out and it was harming people. You know when you walk sometime on the footpath, so some of the branches come out and it harms people. So what this person did, he just cut that one or he just moved it. So the Prophet said, Allah loved that action so much so that Allah entered him into Jannah. <laughs> This is our religion. This is our religion, subhanallah. So tiny thing. But the reward is great. And promised by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is similar hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated. It says, بَيْنَمَا رَجُلٌ يَمْشِي بِطَرِيقٍ وَجَدَا غُسْنَ شَوْكٍ عَلَى الطَّرِيقٍ A man, while he is walking, he saw a branch was coming out. And this branch, that to show him, it has thrones to it, harmful thrones to it. So what he did, فَأَخَّرَهَا, he moved it, he pushed it back. فَشَكَرَ اللَّهِ, he thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَغَرَفَرَ اللَّهِ, Allah forgive him. Allah forgive him for this minor thing, Allah has forgiven him. So as a Muslim, when we are going on the road, if we see any harmful thing, it is our duty to do whatever is best to do, to remove it as a duty. We should fail. <laughs> if somebody is creating harm in the society by driving, imagine if it is duty to remove it, but he is bringing that problem to the street. What will be the punishment of him? How he will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment? So that's why the scholars wrote, no pollution on the road. No sound pollution on the road. You know, sometimes people go very fast, a sports car making a lot of noise. The scholars made it very clear, it is haram. For you, it is a joy for a minute. But same time, there might be a person with the heart problems walking on the street because of your sound of your car, he got affected. He will be the sinner for that. There's no need to make the sound. Unnecessary giving harm to others. Beeping on others. Unnecessary for no reasons. Not allowed. It's completely against Islam. And don't forget, you are in minority and you are looked as a representative of Islam, ambassador of Islam. And you are giving that picture of Islam to others. Islam is free. The teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are free. You will be in trouble on the day of judgment. General ruling. Ya ayuha alladheena amanu idha khila lakum tafassahu fil majalisi fafsahu yafsahu allahu lakum. O people, will, it is said to you in the gatherings, that makes some space. Make some space. Allah will make space for you. The scholars wrote that on the street, if somebody is asking you, give where you give him. This is the principle scholars got from this ayah, subhanAllah. Give me. And so many times, you don't bother about these small things. And cry with him. <coughs> And think the moment when you have given way to others, you feel better. You feel better a person thinks or doesn't think, he say, say, tells you thank you. You feel better. And imagine you have done that because it is the command from Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you'll be rewarded for that as well. <laughs> and our roads, our street, this is our responsibility to keep it clean. One of the elements which has been found why people are getting affected 
with mental health issues. One of them was the rubbish on the street. Rubbish on the street is affecting people. And the Prophet sallallahu said, Ittaqul la'aneen, la'aneen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, be away from two actions which will bring the curse upon you. Curse upon you. What is that curse? Sahaba asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, that alladhi yatakhalla fi tariq nas aw fi dhullihim. A person who throws his waste on the street of the people or where people take some rest in their shadow under the tree or something like this. So the point over here is if your street is not clean and you are just throwing everything on the street you are doing something against the teaching of Islam and you will be sinned for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. The general ruling of Islam la dharara wa la dhirar. <laughs> there is no harm. You cannot do harm to yourself and you are not allowed to cause harm to others. By speeding on the street, by putting full volume, whatever you are listening to, if it is harming others, not allowed. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala general ruling. Don't help each other in the evil. And the scholar says the meaning of that is sometime you compete, you, know, you race with others while you are driving. This is if you know this road is not made for that purpose. And if you are doing it, you are helping a brother on evil. You are committing evil and you are helping others as well. <coughs> General ruling. <coughs> Consider the neighbors. How many of us are sitting here and we wanted to get the reward of the Jum'ah and we park wrongly and we came to the masjid. We block somebody's driveway and we are here. Why we want to get the reward of Juma? But imagine because you have blocked somebody and an emergency comes, those people have to get out. And this situation happened many times with our neighbors, hospital, doctor, nursery, Red Cross. This all happened. So many times complaint came. And one of us, we blocked it. Because the two ragah salah to get in the masjid, that was more important to us than that. But it is not. It is not. If somebody dies because of that, you will be the participating in that one, in that sin, because you have blocked it. And you know the rights of the neighbors in Islam? Where are those going? When you are parking, the same thing will apply there as well. And sometimes we have to use the roads, we have to stand on the road, we have to sit around the corner, talk to each other, standing. Yes, sometimes it happens. But the Prophet ﷺ said, don't do that. If you have to do that, then you have to pay the right of it. Right of the your street. What is the right of the your street? The Prophet ﷺ said, فَعَادُ الطَّرِيقَ حَقَّهَا Give the right of the street to it. When they said, غَصُّ basar, The Prophet ﷺ said, keep your sight lower. Don't stare at anybody who is passing by. Keep your sight lower. This is the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. And if you see something harmful, remove it. And unfortunately, some of us, we take some of the food which is distributed in the masjid or the drink or the bottle of the drink. And when the gathering finish, you will see on the masjid, masjid wall, people have left half apple there or half banana there. Subhanallah. We just learned something good. Why we don't reflect it in our actions? Why we get sins and wipe all what we have just gained by leaving the door of the masjid? Think about this. We stand and we talk in front of the masjid so loudly sometimes that it is disturbing our neighbors. We have to be really careful. So ghassul basar, keep your sight low, remove the harmful things. وَرَدُّ salam And if somebody said salam, answer him back. وَعَلَيْكُمْ salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And then, 
وامر بالمعروف ونهي عن المنكر and give امر بالمعروف call people towards goodness and stop them from the evil dear brothers these were few of the rulings a general ruling about the road about the driving road safety may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us to In alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala mu'ala wa ala ba'da. Dear brothers, it is part of your religion to obey the road laws, speeding laws. Whatever is there, the speed limit has been placed for the safety of yours. The scholars were asked about this. If somebody is speeding and he kills somebody or he dies, what is the ruling about it? In Islam, if you got killed <coughs> while you are traveling, you will be shaheed. You will be shaheed. But if you got killed while you are speeding, or if you kill somebody, then it is not shaheed. It is not shaheed. From the shahada, from 30 mile speed, if you go 34, 35, 33, and you die in that one. From 70 to 75 or 80, you die in that one. <coughs> From Shahada, which was limited to your speed limit, 70 miles per hour, that is your speed. So Shahada is there. If you die under that one, that is the Shahid. If you cross that limit, the scholars mention it is suicide. It is suicide. Can you see that thin line there? Understand this. And some of the scholars says, no, it is not suicide, it is he is killing himself by mistake. And there is also a big sin in Islam. If you take the wording of the scholars, such as Bin Baz, rahimahullah, he said it is suicide. And Shaykh Uthaymin, rahimahullah, he said, no, it is khat al It is by mistake you got killed or you killed somebody. In both ways, shahada gone. Shahada gone. And if it is the suicide, then the Prophet وسلم, said the person who suicide he will never enter into Jannah. He will be punished by the same thing which he killed himself forever in hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And if you kill somebody, and if we take it as a khat al khata, that it is by mistake you kill somebody, then the consequences of that one are really great. You have to free a slave, you have to give the diyya, ransom money, you have to give that one, and so on and so forth. But the point over here is speeding. And subhanallah, O youth, we show our rujula manhood in back of the driving seat. No, that is not the manhood. That is himaqa, that is humqa, that is foolishness. If somebody is driving fast, he has good car, driving fast, and you kill somebody, it's foolishness. We believe in Iman, our Iman is in Qadr, yes. But it does not mean it is part of my Qadr, I'll drive fast, if I die, I'll die, no. That has the limitations, we have to understand it really, really carefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't kill yourself, don't destroy yourself. Dear brothers, this fatwa of the scholars keep in your mind all the time when you are driving. And see, your children, youth, convey this message to them. That by doing that, they are bringing a very bad name to Muslims and Islam. They are destroying the community. They are bringing the bad name to that community. And as we know, this topic, whole topic came because of the last <coughs> week accident happened on near to the masjid, <coughs> Wingrove Road, and the lady who died, may Allah grant patience to her family and guide them. But when people found out that was somebody, Asian, Muslims, people started talking against Muslim and Islam. Whether they are doing right or not, that is another matter. But who gave them that chance? Dear brothers, stick to the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
And keep this in your mind. That if you are going against the law, that is against the law, against the law in Islam as well. أَتِيُوا اللَّهَ وَأَتِيُوا الرَّسُولُ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Obey Allah and the Messenger and the rulers. This is the teaching and this is the message take from this khutbah. That when you will drive, you will drive considerately, kindly, giving way to others. It does not matter how hurry, in hurry you are, you are not going to save a lot of time. It is a matter of a few minutes. But this is think as a responsibility from your religion. In that way you will be rewarded for that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us to offer. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إباد الله رحمني ورحمكم الله إن الله أمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي عيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر رحمة الله